up guys, TJ here. Today I'm going to be walking you through all my gear that I'm going to be using for the 2017-2018 season. Let's check it out. Alright guys, let's start off by talking about boots. So these are the boots I'm going to be running this year. This is a brand new boot for 2018 from 32. It's called the 32 TM3. So first off, this is just a pretty burly boot. It's got some really solid construction going on here. You can take this guy sledding, you can take it touring, and you can definitely take it for some resort riding as well. Very, very versatile boot. So this boot's gonna have an adjustable flex thanks to these inserts here. So when you want more support, more response, say you're out free riding, go ahead and throw these inserts in there. But when you're in the park and you want a little bit of a softer boot, go ahead and pull these out. It's gonna give you a little bit more flex, a little more tweakability. It's also gonna have a brand new liner from 32. It's gonna have their level four liner and it has adjustable arch support. It's also gonna have a foam insole with a rubberized outsole, so it's still very lightweight, but it has tons of grip. Pretty sick boot. All right, guys, let's talk about jackets. So I run the Volcom Gore-Tex jacket. This is gonna be a shell, so there's no insulation on it. That's just what I prefer. It's gonna have a Gore-Tex layer, a Gore-Tex membrane in it, so it's completely waterproof while still retaining lots of breathability. So it's anything rated about 15 to 20K is also gonna be very, very waterproof. On those warmer days where I'm not really looking to wear a full waterproof shell, but I still want some waterproofing, I've got a technical layer here. So this is a technical flannel from Volcom. It's got a DWR finish on it. So if there is some light rain or moisture, it's just gonna roll off there, doing a good job of keeping you nice and dry, but it will soak through eventually if it's really wet. So it's not gonna be on the same level as something like this. All right, let's talk about pants next. So these are the same pants that Kevin runs. These are the Volcom articulated pants. They're really comfortable, really waterproof. It's also really cool if you pair Volcom pants with a Volcom jacket because you're able to zip them together. So that's a pretty cool feature too on powder days, keeping you nice and dry, keeping the snow out from up your back and all that good stuff. I also wanna call out this belt real quick. So this is an arcade belt. It's stretchy and it just has a quick buckle to take it on and off. It works really well because of that stretch. It just is really snug and secure. I'm not thinking about my pants all day wearing this belt. So if you guys are looking for a good snowboard belt, check out Arcade Belts. Okay, while outerwear is definitely really important to stay warm and dry while you're out there on the hill, a base layer is equally as important. And my favorite base layer is going to be the Air Blaster Ninja Suit. So that's what this guy is. This is a merino wool base layer. It's really, really warm. Obviously, it's a one-piece base layer. It also has a hood, so um, it really does a good job at keeping your body heat in and keeping you really nice and warm. And if you gotta go to the bathroom, they actually put a zipper starting right here, going all the way around the back, and then coming back up to the front right here. So I really only wear this on the really, really cold day just because it is so warm. But I uh, figured I'd call it out for you guys. It's kind of interesting and it's very, very functional. It's kind of cold. I think I might actually throw it on right now real quick. All right, that's way better. So it's actually pretty affordable too. When you consider the cost of buying a separate bottom and upper high quality base layer, it comes out to about the same price as the Ninja Suit. So check it out. Let's talk about helmets, face masks, goggles, and gloves. So I'm running the same helmet that I've been running the last few years. I just got a brand new one this year. It's gonna be a sandbox helmet. It does have a vent on it. So we got a little pocket here on the front allowing air to come in, going up over the helmet and then vent out the back here to help keep your head nice and cool. It's a solid helmet. It's gonna protect your head. It's got a good aesthetic to it. And this particular helmet fits my head very well. So I'm a fan of it. This is the Sandbox Classic 2.0. For goggles this year, I'm gonna be running Dragon Goggles. I'm gonna have the NFX, which is this guy right here. This is gonna be a cylindrical lens, and uh, also the X1. 
So that's this guy right here. This is gonna be a spherical lens. Um, there's gonna be a little bit better optical clarity out of the X1 because it is an injection molded lens, whereas the NFX is not. Both of these are gonna have Dragon's new Luma lens technology, so that new color optimization that's been going around like Oakley Prism or Smith Chroma Pop. And uh, that stuff really works, honestly. My first day out with the Luma lens, I noticed a huge difference. I would describe it as like color correction on a video, but in real life. That's kind of uh, my experience with it. So it's pretty cool, definitely worth checking out. And all Dragon goggles for 2018 are gonna be coming with this Luma Lens technology at no additional cost. And pretty much all Dragon goggles come with an additional lens as well. So definitely worth checking out. I also got some sunglasses from Dragon this year, which I'm really stoked on. They're a really large fit, which is my preference. And these are the Dragon uh, The Jam. All right, cool. So for face masks, I'm a fan of the brand Blackstrap. Um, they make the Balaclava and the Neck Tube. Those are kind of like their top two face masks. Um, and then I also have a thicker neck warmer here from Cole. These are my top three go-tos, um, but I would say for sure my favorite is the Blackstrap Balaclava. And uh, both of these are gonna be dual layer face masks. So they're gonna be nice and warm, but still be really breathable. And for gloves this year, I'm gonna be running the Crab Grab Punch Mitt. So this is actually Scott Stevens Pro model. Um, I've only been using them for a few days, but they've been really good so far. Definitely nice and waterproof. And they're really, really warm. They're warmer than I thought they would be. Um, they got a really grippy palm, so good for grabs, you know. I think that's something Crab Grab uh, put a priority on for their gloves. And then you actually have some padding right here up on your knuckles uh, where it says Crab Grab. Um, so that's why they call it the punch mitt. Um, pretty solid glove, I'm stoked on it. Um, I like the white color popping, so these are the gloves I'm gonna be rocking this year. All right, I think that's a good segue to start talking about snowboards. So the first board I'm gonna talk about is the Ride War Pig here. This is gonna be the 154. It has a 27 centimeter waist width, so it's really, really wide. It's gonna be a lot of fun for carving. Um, I'm gonna be using this as more of a free ride snowboard. Definitely gonna be taking it in the powder as well. I'm gonna be doing a lot of really fun carving stuff with it, and I'll probably take it through the park too. It's just a really versatile snowboard. Make sure you check out the snowboard review on it if you haven't yet. I'm running crab grabs on this guy, so we got crab grab between the feet. I pretty much have traction everywhere in there. Crab grab does a really good job. It's a very functional product and uh, it'll also give you some street cred in the lift line. So if you're looking for a good stomp pad, check out Crab Grab. And I paired the War Pig with the Union Atlas binding. So, so you're gonna get that lifetime warranty on the base plate and heel cuff. You're gonna get the adjustable heel cuff. You're gonna get the toolless adjustment for your straps. You're gonna get magnesium buckles and you're gonna get that EVA foam on the bottom of the base plate. You're also gonna find XO frame straps in this guy. So this is gonna be um, a high, higher end strap from Union, just a little bit more comfortable, um, a little bit more performance out of this guy. But the main thing is that I, I think it's more comfortable. All right, next up we have the Battalion Evil Twin. So this is actually gonna be my daily driver this year that I'm gonna be using most of the time when I'm not reviewing snowboards. This is gonna be the 154 Evil Twin. It is a true twin full regular camber snowboard with triple base technology. So it's really, really catch free, but you still get that power and precision of the camber. So um, I'm gonna be using this as more of a jump board and a freestyle snowboard, but like I said, it's gonna be my daily driver. I paired this guy with the Union Force bindings, which is another really solid, responsive, kind of free ride, but do it all style binding from Union. It's been on their line for years and years, just a solid go-to binding. Um, kind of similar to the Atlas performance wise, but I would say the Atlas is kind of like the Cadillac version of the Force. So both great choices. I'm gonna run the Atlas on the War Pig and the Force on the Evil Twin here. And uh, I'll give you guys a comparison throughout the season as well on these guys. Uh, all right guys, so this is the Jones Explorer Split. Uh, this is a size 159. This is what I'm gonna be using as my split board this year. Uh, paired it with the Union Expedition bindings, which I'm really, really stoked on. But the Expedition is a brand new binding for Union this year. It's their first time making a split board binding, and I think they really killed it. We will have some videos coming out on the channel here in a few days talking about these bindings in more detail, um, as well as these boots here. So I'm not going to get into too much detail on the bindings, but uh, 
just so you guys know this is what I'm running on the split board this year I'm also going to be using the Union Expedition skins um, the other thing I wanted to show you is just my safety gear so I'm using the backcountry access t3 package uh, basically backcountry access beacon shovel and probe um, using their T3 beacon, which is one of the more popular ones. Um, the T2 is also a really solid beacon choice. The last thing I wanted to share with you guys is just some of the camera gear that I use to film the board reviews and things like that. Uh, pretty much everything is filmed with GoPro. I'm going to be using the GoPro Hero 6 this year as well as the Karma Grip. Um, I think the Karma Grip is just the strongest gimbal out right now as far as the motors go. Um, really, really steady shots. When I tried it for mountain biking, um, that's what kind of blew my mind and, and swayed me to get the Karma Grip. So I think that's going to be really cool this year. Also recommend just having you know your standard kind of pole to shoot with. I use the SP Gadgets uh, Go Pole. Um, it's been pretty solid, but like Kevin says, those poles do wear out over time, especially when you use them as much as we do. And then I also have a little timer to get rotating time lapses, as well as the uh, DJI Mavic Pro over there. So that's basically the setup. GoPro for most of the snowboarding, iPhone for a lot of the audio stuff, as well as time lapses, and then we got the Mavic Pro for those epic drone shots. Awesome guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to learn more about this gear, we're going to have all of it linked down in the description below. So I encourage you to check that out. Also, if you got any questions, leave it down in the comments. You can hit me up on Instagram at Board Archive. Thanks again for watching, guys. I appreciate you. We'll see you in the next video soon.